Today, I'm going to show you guys how to set up our Easy Plug. Our Easy Plug is a Wi Fi outlet that's 100% locally controlled that works with Octoprint. And for you home automation guys, this also works out of the box with Home Assistant. So I'm going to show you right now how to connect it to your network, set its IP address, and get it talking to your Octoprint installation so you can control your printer's power directly from your Octoprint interface. So let's get to it. Today I'm going to show you guys how to set up the Easy Plug with your Octoprint installation. This works great for control of your printer's power, whether it's on an Easy Pi setup that we sell or your regular Octoprint plugin. These plugs can also be used for home automation purposes to control any US plug 110 volt devices up to a max load of 10 amps. We're going to go over a couple of steps and it's very simple. You just follow the steps and then you'll have your Octoprint installation talking to your Easy Plug. The steps are going to be connecting the plug to your home Wi-Fi. Then we're going to set an IP address on the plug so that it does not change. Then we'll go over configuring the Octoprint Tasmoda plugin, which you can install directly from the plugin section of Octoprint. If you have an EasyPie setup, this plugin comes pre-installed and all you have to do is enable it and install any updates if there are any. After the plugin's installed, we tell it the information to talk to the plug hit save, and then we're off to the races. The Easy Plug will give you control over your printer to automatically turn it on and power it down before and after a print. And as an additional safety measure, the combination of an Octoprint setup with the Easy Plug will also be able to take over and kill the power going to your printer in the event that there's an error on the machine or if there's a thermal runaway condition. So it gives you one extra layer of protection against any sort of electrical issues because even if you're bored, stops responding completely, the plug can actually shut the power off to the printer. So let's say your processor on the board completely locked up and the heaters are on full blast, Octoprint system will notice that the board is in an error state and then the plug-in will tell the Wi-Fi outlet to turn it off. So this is a really helpful feature as a safety precaution and it also gives you a lot of convenience. So let's jump into it. I'm gonna take you step-by-step -step on how to set up the Easy Plug with Octoprint. The only thing you're going to need to do this is a computer, a phone, or a tablet that has a wireless card in it. And in this case, I'm using my desktop here, and this has a wireless card in it. Make sure you know your wireless name and your wireless password before you start this. And I already have the Easy Plug plugged into the wall right now. Once the Easy Plug boots, if you notice here my wireless network names, you'll see a Wi Fi network that has the name Easy Plug in its name. This is the one that your plug is broadcasting. I would recommend setting up one plug at a time because it can get a little confusing if you're trying to do multiple at the same time. One thing I do want to note is if you notice here, I have two separate networks for my Wi-Fi. One is a 2.4 gigahertz, which is just this one here. And the other one that has the underscore 5G at the end, that's a five gigahertz one. Now it doesn't matter what network your computer or phone or tablet is connected to, as long as it's on the same network as the plug will be. So in my case, regardless if I'm connected to my 2.4 gigahertz one or my five gigahertz one, I'm still on the same network. But what we need to do now is get the plug onto my Wi-Fi. So to do that, we're gonna go ahead and click Easy Plug and hit Connect. At this point, your computer is going to connect to the Easy Plug network. And sometimes Windows 10 will pull up this redirect page. Sometimes it'll also pull up this page that takes you right to the Easy Plug setup. If for some reason yours doesn't go right to the Easy Plug setup, you can access that page by opening up your web browser and then typing the IP address of 192.168.4.1 and press enter. This will take you to the setup page. Now, if you know your wireless network name, you can go ahead and type it in. Or if you want to make sure it's exact, go ahead and hit scan for Wi-Fi networks and the plug's going to go and see what networks it can find. If you notice here, it sorts them from signal strength highest to lowest, and this is my network here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that one, and it will automatically populate the network name here. You wanna make sure this matches your Wi-Fi exactly, even with the case. So if I typed just a lowercase IP at the end, it's not going to work. It has to be exactly the same as it's displayed on your screen. 
Now, if you wanna make sure you're getting your Wi-Fi password correct, you can check this little box here and it will show your Wi-Fi password. So I'll show you here. I'm gonna type my password here and you can verify it by clicking the little checkbox. So I have my Wi-Fi name entered. I have my Wi-Fi password in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. Now, before I hit save, grab this name here because this is the name that your plug will use to identify itself on the network. Now, some routers will support you just typing this into your address bar and it'll bring up the web interface of the Easy Plug. Other ones, you might not be able to. So let's just go ahead and copy that. And I'm gonna open up Notepad here and just paste that in so I have it for reference. So go ahead and hit save. And at this point, the Easy Plug is gonna disconnect from your computer. As you can see here, it dropped off and then it's gonna to connect to your Wi-Fi. So I opened my web browser and you can see that I'm reconnected to the internet. And the first thing I'm going to try is see if my router supports what's called DNS resolution for the clients on the network. Some routers do, some don't. So if we go and copy the name we pasted earlier from the previous setup step, we can go ahead and type HTTP colon slash slash and then the plug name. And as you can see, this router does not support the DNS resolution. So another thing we can check is we can try pinging it. So I open up command prompt, or if you're on Linux or Mac, you can do a terminal and you type ping. And then again, if we copy this and paste it, we can try to ping it. Now again, this router does not support the DNS resolution. So there's a couple other ways you can do it. If you know how to log into your router, you can type in its IP address and then log into its admin interface. Now, your router will probably be different, but it's the same basic idea. You want to locate what's called the DHCP client list. On this particular router, I know it's under DHCP and then DHCP clients list. And as you can see here, there's my plug. And I can see that it got the IP address of 192.168.254.101. So if I copy this, and open up a new tab and paste that in. Now I have the web interface for my plug. Now, the one thing to note is that this IP address, as you set it up right now, can change if you unplug the plug and plug it back in. That's because it's getting an address from your router. There's two ways you can set the IP address so it does not change, and there's a couple considerations you need to do when you do this. One of them is doing it directly through the plug here, through its console, and we have a setup guide on our website through the help center about setting the static IP. Another option that most routers support is what's called an address reservation. And all you need to set up an address reservation is the MAC address, which if you look here, it's right here on the client list. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that. And this router doesn't actually let me right click to bring up a menu, but if I, do a, if I highlight the MAC address, do a control C, it's now on my clipboard. So let's say I don't want this address to ever change. And this is important because when we're setting up the Octoprint plugin later, it's going to talk on the IP address. So I highly recommend you either set a reservation on your router or you set an address on the plug itself. If I go to address reservation here on my router, I can just hit add new, paste its MAC address, and then give it the address that I want it to have. So on my particular router, I know my network is this 192.168.254.x network. So let's say I want to put it on 192.168.254.10. Now you want to make sure that you're not using an address that's already in use on your network. Now there's multiple different things that could cause an address to be in use. One, it could be in what's called the DHCP pool, which is a range that your router gives addresses out in. The other one could be is if you have another static assigned address on your network. So before we go ahead and assign an address, I'm going to go ahead and ping that address to make sure it's available. So I just do that by going back to the command prompt, typing ping, followed by the address I want to use, and see if I get a reply. As you notice, I'm not getting any reply. Now just to show you, I know my router is on the address ending in dot one. So if I do a ping command to that, you'll see I get a reply and that's an address I cannot use. So now that I know that this address is free on my network, I'm going to go ahead and make sure it's set to enabled. Again, this will vary 
based on different router manufacturers. All the different router manufacturers, even the same ones, can have a different interface. So refer to your router's guide on how to get to your DHCP client list and how to set up an address reservation. Most routers these days support these features. They're very basic, fundamental features for a router. So in my case, I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. And we can see that it's now showing the reservation is in the router. But if we look, the plug still has the old address. So to force the plug to get the new address, I can go ahead and tell it to restart and then confirm it. And now the plug will restart and get the new address from my router. So if I do a ping to the IP address that I told it to reserve, we can see now after I restarted it, the plug is on that address. So now if I type in the address that I reserved for it, it comes up here. So this address will not change as long as I don't change anything on my router. Now, if you want to find out what range you have that's safe to use on your network, every router has a setting that lets you set where the starting point of the DHCP server is and the ending point. And you can see this one starts handing out addresses starting at the 100 number on the last segment of the IP address and it ends at 199. So that means that I'm safe to use anything from 99 and lower and 200 and higher, with the exception of things that are already in use. Now, my router is on dot one, 192.168.254.1, so I can't use that address. So just be mindful of that when you're statically assigning things, because if you set an IP address with the same address as another device on the network, you will break your network and cause all sorts of weird traffic issues. So but I just wanted to point this out because you can change this and you can see where those settings are in your router. And like I said, even though this is just a basic TP-Link router, every single router has these same settings. Just look into the documentation for your router or just poke around in the settings and you can usually find what you're looking for. Now, let's say I don't want to statically assign the address via a reservation like we just did. Maybe your router doesn't support it. Well, you can still do that with the EasyPlug itself. So if we go to the Help Center under the EasyPlug product documentation, you'll see we have a guide on setting the static IP address on the EasyPlug. And it's pretty easy. We just go to the console tab on our plug. So we're back at the address of our plug we're gonna hit console. So I'm gonna have these side by side so we can reference them. And it's pretty simple. There's four commands that you can enter in to set the IP address, the gateway, which is the IP address of your router, the subnet mask, and the DNS server. Now the DNS server isn't really important because these plugs don't talk out to the internet, but it's always good practice to put it in. I'm gonna go ahead and enter in the IP address for the plug which is IP address one, and then I'm gonna enter the address in. Hit enter. I'm gonna now set the router address, which I know is dot one. So if you're not sure what your router's address is, you can get it very easily on any device that's connected to the network. On Windows, if you just open up a command prompt and type IP config slash all, you'll get your network information here. So you can see my DNS server is 192.168.254.1 and so is my default gateway. So this is what I would put in for the value of IP address two. You can also see what the subnet mask is, which is the IP address three value, which is 255.255.255.0. And this is typically what your home networks are. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue. So I have all my information here. I'm just gonna enter it in at this point. And there we go. Now I've entered in the information. So if I go ahead and I'm going to delete, just to show you guys this works. I'm going to go ahead and delete the reservation of my router. And I'm going to go ahead and restart the plug. So now if I entered everything in correctly, then the plug will come back up. It usually takes about 10 to 15 seconds for it to restart. So just like that, the plug now is setting its own IP address. So that's two different ways you can set it. You can do it through a DHCP reservation or through a static IP. So the next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and power up our Octoprint setup. In this case, I'm using our EasyPi Pro with the plastic case here and I've got its power adapter. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in and then get it connected to my network. And I'm gonna show you guys how to install and configure the plugin to talk to the plug that we just set up. So now that we have the plug connected to our network, we can use this to connect to Octoprint. So Octoprint can actually control the plug. And this is really helpful because not only can you turn the printer on and off directly from Octoprint, but if there's a thermal runaway condition that the board doesn't detect, or maybe your firmware doesn't have it, or there's an error with the printer, then it can automatically shut the plug off in an emergency situation. Now, I do not recommend you use your printers unattended, but this is a nice option to have just in case something does go wrong. If you step out of the room for a second to go get a snack and your printer decides to become sentient and try to take over. So the first thing we're gonna do is open up our Octoprint interface. I'm gonna load this up here. And if you have our EasyPy set up, the plugin's actually pre-installed, but you may need to update it. To do that, you can hit the little wrench here at the top go to Plugin Manager, and then just type in Tasmota, T-A-S-M-O-T-A. And you can see by default, we have this plugin disabled. So I'm going to go ahead and click the Enable Plugin button right here, and then go ahead and hit Restart Now. So it'll take a minute or two for the Pi to reboot, and then once it reboots, we're gonna go back into the setup screen. And if the plugin does say that it needs to be up, and if the plugin says it needs to be updated, go ahead and update the plugin before we go further on this installation. So as you can see here, my Octoprint installation restarted and enabled the plugin and it needs an update. So I'm gonna go ahead and update that right now. So I now have the latest update for the plugin on my EasyPie setup. I'm gonna go ahead and go back into the settings menu by clicking the wrench at the top. And if we scroll down on the left under the plugin section, we'll now see a Tasmoda option. So go ahead and click that, click the little plus button, and this is where we add our plug. Now in the previous step, we assigned the plug its own IP address. So I'm gonna go ahead and type that IP in right now. If you want to label it, you can. I'm gonna call this just printer one. And then if you hit verify and all your information is correct, it will tell you that it responded and is configured properly. So go ahead and hit OK. So now that we have the plug talking to the Octoprint installation, we're going to want to go ahead and hit close. And we're going to turn on some of these options here that the plugin has to actually automatically control the outlet. So the ones I recommend using are the enable thermal runaway monitoring, power off on idle, and error event monitoring. Go back into the edit menu and we're going to want to tell it to use this plug for these options so off on idle thermal runaway off on error and also i check worn on printing and i recommend setting the auto connect delay to 12 seconds instead of the default of 10. go ahead and click close and all we have left to do is hit save So now I have the plug configured and I do have a printer board connected to my Pi so I can show you guys. I'm gonna go ahead and click the little power bolt icon at the top. You'll see the light turns on behind me which is plugged into the easy plug. And after 12 seconds, it's going to go ahead and automatically connect to your printer board. And just like that, we're connected. Now, if I go ahead and cause an error condition on the printer board, which is really easy to do. I'm just going to short out the two thermistor pins on the hot end. It's going to automatically shut off the outlet because it detected an air condition. So I'm going to show you that right now. Just like that, if we look here, it triggered a max temp error and it shut the light off. If that was an actual issue with the printer where the hot end was having a problem and triggered the max temp error, your AC power would have been completely cut off within a couple of seconds of that error registering, which is very good, which means it doesn't have any more opportunity to cause a fire or melt anything down or cause damage to your printer or your property. One other thing I do want to note is I've had weird behavior with this plugin. If you also check the disconnect event monitoring, I don't recommend using this one. I typically will use these top three options here, the thermal runaway monitoring, the power off on idle, and the error event monitoring. Now, one thing I wanna note is that let's say I uncheck these options here, 
and then go back into the config, you'll see that they're grayed out because you can't actually enable the options on the plug unless they're enabled at the plugin level here. So just keep that in mind. If you're trying to set one of these options here and it's grayed out, it's because it needs to be enabled in the main section here for the plugin itself. So as you can see, there's just a couple of steps to get up and running, but once it's set up, it's gonna give you a lot more control over your printer and give you a lot more convenience because no longer will you be having to sit there listening to your printer while it's idling or go over there and manually turn it on and off. You can let the plug do all the work for you. It'll help you save power because then your printer's not sitting there idling if you forget to turn it off. And the added bonus of you now have an extra layer of safety on the printer in the event that something does go wrong and your printer's firmware doesn't catch the problem. So I hope you guys enjoy this. I hope you guys enjoy these plugs. I'm really excited to bring these to market. And for you home automation guys, I know you're gonna appreciate having a plug that's out of the box flash with Tasmoda because you can use these plugs also, not just for printers, but for home automation purposes as they come pre-flash with the Tasmoda firmware on there. There's no Chinese applications to install on your phone. These are 100% locally controlled and under your control. Once these plugs leave here, I don't even have remote control over them. They're all local, and I believe that's how this type of stuff should be, so you can have a peace of mind of knowing what's on your network and that you have control over your hardware. Anyways, thanks for watching, and as always, happy printing.